Hey everyone, my name is Shreel and I'm a scale engineer here at Databricks. And today we're going to talk about setting up Unity Catalog, storage credentials, and external locations in order to connect to AWS S3. So Databricks Unity Catalog is a unified and open governance for all data and AI assets. It allows you to connect to any external data source, as well as has a bunch of features related to data security, such as access control and auditing, data discovery, data lineage, and observability tools such as cost controls and business semantics. It is an open access and, collabor and allows for collaboration with any tool, engine, or platform. In terms of connecting to AWS S3 or any cloud storage, there are two main components in terms of Unity Catalog that we need to set up. The first one is a storage credential. A storage credential enables Unity Catalog to connect to an external cloud store. It is access control to determine which users can use the storage credential, and you can use one credential for multiple external locations. Some examples will include an IAM role for AWS S3, and for Azure, it's going to be a managed identity to connect to Azure storage accounts. External storage, an external location combines a cloud storage path with a storage credential in order to access the actual location on the bucket itself. An external location is used for accessing specific locations within a cloud store, and it is also access control to determine which users and group can access that space. It is generally best practice to not use storage credentials for direct access to the underlying location, but rather to set up external locations instead. Now we will navigate over to the Databricks workspace in order to actually set up our storage credentials and external locations. So here I am on my Databricks UI, and in order to actually set up the storage credentials and external locations, over here I will navigate to the external data tab, and from here I will navigate over to the credentials page. This is where we will set up our storage credentials. So I will click on create credential, and it'll pop up this UI where I'll actually register the AWS IAM role. Now I've gone ahead and set up a sample IAM role on AWS. So if I navigate over to my AWS console, you will see that I have this Databricks demo ingestion IAM role set up. Within the trust relationships of this role, you will see that I have this JSON definition. And this is pretty much what we have in our public documentations as well. And a key thing to know is that on line nine over here, we do need to make this IAM role self-assuming so I've gone ahead and added in the same ARN for this IAM role. And on line 15 for the external ID, I've gone ahead and added in the storage credential external ID. Um, you can grab this from the workspace itself once you register the storage credential if you want to do so after the fact. Now, if I go back to my permissions tab, I will see that I have a Databricks demo ingestion IAM policy attached to this role. So if we go ahead and open this up, we can take a look at that, what that policy looks like. So over here, we have our JSON policy for this IAM policy and you'll you'll see that over here underneath the resources section i've specified two resources which is going to be the name of the s3 bucket that i want this policy to read and write from so the name of that s3 bucket that i have set up is databricks demo ingestion and this slash star means that i want all the objects within this s3 bucket to be read and read and written from and i'm also given permissions on the actual bucket itself and the rest of the policy follows as what we have in our documentation. So now going back to the IAM role, what I will do is I will grab this ARN so that I can supply it to the Databricks UI. So now that we are back on the Databricks workspace, uh, on the create a new credential page, I will go ahead and give this credential a name. So I will call this Databricks ingestion credential, and I will go ahead and paste in that IAM role ARN that I copied. And once that has been copied and pasted, I will click the create button. And it'll say that the create credential has been created, this is the external ID. If you haven't already updated your trust policy, you can go ahead and replace that with this ID over here. But I've already done so, so I'll just click done. And awesome, my credential has been created. So what I'll do is validate the config configuration in the right-hand side over here. And as you can see, all the tests have passed. So I'll close this out. And what I'll do is go back to my Catalog Explorer, click on the external data tab, and next we can set up our actual external location. So as you recall, the external location is the actual path to the S3 itself. So I'll click on create external location. I'll go with the manual approach and I will give my external location a name. So I'll call it Databricks ingestion dash EL for external location. Storage type, this is an S3 bucket. And then for URL, this is gonna be the actual path to the S3 bucket. So I will do S3 colon slash slash, and then I will navigate over to my AWS section to get the name of my bucket. So this is the bucket that I have set up on AWS. The name of the bucket is Databricks dash demo ingestion. And as you can see, there's just one CSV file within this S3 bucket. So I will copy over this name of the bucket and then go back over to Databricks and then paste in that bucket name. For storage credential from the dropdown, I'll choose the storage credential that we just created. Awesome. And next we can click create. Cool, so our external location has been set up and what I'll do is test the connection to make sure everything looks good and all the tests have passed, which means we should be good to go. I'll exit out of this. And from here, what I'll do is go over to the browse section and we should see that we have that same CSV file that we saw on our AWS side. 
From here, what we can do is create a table from the CSV file. So I'll click on the create table. I will choose our CSV file and preview table. And as you can see, the UI has shown up, which will allow us to preview the data as well as choose which catalog schema and the name of the table that we want to write to. For this, I'll leave the catalog as demo workspace US East one. The schema will be default and I'll change the name of the table to parks. Awesome. So as you can see, we have some sample data from the CSV file. If we wanted to preview it, we would just go here, um, but everything looks good to me. So what I'll do is hit create table. And in a few seconds, our table should be created. Awesome. So now navigating back over to our Unity catalog section underneath our demo workspace catalog. And within the default schema, we see that we have our parks table, which was created from the CSV from our S3 bucket. If I go over to the sample data tab, I will see, be able to preview some of that data that we saw, as well as run any analytics or queries on top of it. So with that, we have successfully set up a connection to S3 using Databricks Unity catalog, as well as storage credentials and external locations. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks.